what's the first stage of sleep? What do we call that stage? The very, you're going to sleep. Let's say it's um, midnight. You fall asleep. That stage, that very first stage is called stage one, which is really creative. <laughs> Drifting on the edge of consciousness, you're lightly asleep, you awaken easily. This is where your, your roommate will come in or someone will make a noise, you're like, you dork, I was asleep. But you're really in a light stage. This lasts, okay, I'm gonna describe a perfect night's sleep, which none of us, well, few of us have all of the time. It's just not common to have a perfect night's sleep because we, we, you, know, you have sleep deficits and so you make up for it. But if it was a perfect night, this would be 12, 10, to 12, oh, let's say you fell asleep at midnight. This would be about from midnight till about 12 or 12.15. 12, Perfect night, 10, 15 minutes, stage one. Where would you go next? Yes, very cool. By the way, it looks like alpha waves, but you can see stage one waves don't look all that different. So when we hook people up to brain, brain pattern, EEGs, and we're watching these patterns and these waves, it's like, okay, we, you could see a change, and that's how we know you're in stage one and then you go to stage two, it's about 12.20. This is where you're clearly asleep and one little weird thing about your electricity, it goes like this. So here's your brain asleep, it goes and all of a sudden, there's a sleep spindle and a sleep spindle is this. That's weird, huh? That's called a sleep spindle and it sounds just like that. It's just this burst of activity. And by the way, we hook up your brain and we watch this and we see it and that's, that's always a sign of stage two sleep. Spindles, sleep spindles. All right, after stage two, where do you go next? It's now 12.30, 12.25, you're, yeah, perfect night's sleep, you're in stage three. You're very, this is where it would be, if, if, if you walk in on your roommate or they walk in on you in stage three, you're, they're going to hear your breathing. I can always tell when Elisa is asleep because it's just that. A real slow down breathing and you could hear this in your roommate or, and that's stage three. And by the way, it's, it's got, you could see the waves uh, patterns look a little bit more spread out, a little higher amplitude there, and then it's now about 1240 or 1245, and this is the deepest sleep called stage four. You are definitely not being going to be awoken during this stage, even if you get up and walk and talk uh, my brother, for example, when he would walk in his sleep, you never woke him up. Why not? The reason is because he, could, he wouldn't wake up. He's in stage four sleep when he walked and talked or people wetting the bed. This is where they're going to do it. It's in deep sleep and you just can't wake people up this way. And that stage four sleep is by, by far the most, what you call restful what we, what we, when you hit stage four sleep, you're in what's, your body is now responding in this deep, very relaxing sleep. Okay? Questions about stage four or any, yes? Sure, how many would, that's a good question. How, let's ask how many, how many of you, would you say you're light sleepers? You're light, you, you waken pretty easily, yeah. How many of you call yourself deep sleepers? You're like the opposite deep sleep. Uh huh. There are differences. Your question is for light sleepers, they're still hitting this stage. They just simply aren't, they're just simply more aware of things. So my wife, for example, is a light sleeper. She hits stage four, but she, hear, like she would hear the babies crying. I never did, which is kind of cool, I think. For me, it was awesome. And so she would, I would just be out and she would say, gosh, did you hear that? Like, oh, no, I didn't hear anything. And she's more likely to hear, but it's, she's still hitting stage four. It's just that she's like, her brain's like more attuned to things while asleep than I am. Where do you go after stage four? 
Oh, that's the question. Yeah, after stage four? Oh, by the way, what time is exactly now? If a perfect night, it's 12, you went to bed at midnight, it's now 1245. 45 minutes is half of? It's half of 90 minutes. And 90 minutes is a very common ultradian cycle. 45 minutes, and after, by the way, stage four, your next stage sleep, it, oh, here's what it looks like when we hook you up. You, big delta waves, a very loud, high amplitude, okay, delta waves. And that shows a person that's in stage four. By the way, after stage four, bedwetting, uh, for some, walking and others, it now transitions to stage three for about 15, 10 minutes. Kind of cool, and after stage three, stage two. And after stage two, what do you think? By the way, this is the weird part, because you don't get back to one necessarily. You go into what sleep after. It's now, by the way, you went to sleep at midnight, it is now 1.15. That's how long since you've been to sleep? Hour and 15 minutes to an hour and close to an hour 30 is how many minutes? 115 to 130, 90 minutes, and you are beginning stage called rapid eye movement. And the answer to the little trick that says you never remember your dreams, but you would like to remember your dreams, this is the trick. Find somebody to watch you fall asleep. <laughs> Or, if you're a perfect sleeper, set your alarm for 90 minutes after you fall asleep. Make it 95. It's probably better if you could use a roommate. Say, hey, I'm gonna fall asleep. Are you gonna be awake at 1.30? And if you trust them, then just have them watch for when your eyes are moving and darting back and forth under your eyelids. Let you go for about three or four or five minutes and then have, you, have them wake you up and you will remember your dream. <laughs> that's it. Is that, that sounds kind of cheesy, but that's what you do. That's it, there's no, there are other ways. Some of you could set an alarm that would somehow awaken you. Some of you have an app, a sleep, how many of you ever tried the sleep app to find out what kind of stages you're in and sleeping? But if it's really, if you're, if you're in a perfect night's sleep, here's what you'll do. You will probably have at this point a body transition. That is, you'll probably move. How many of you all have ever felt like you've fallen asleep you're so tired, and one sign that you're so tired and slept so well is you went to sleep in one position and you woke up there and you never moved all night. Has anybody, have you ever felt that before? It's probably not true. You probably moved upwards of probably 10 to 12 times that night. You just keep moving. Every time you get into REM sleep and leave it, you, you do a body movement like that. Unless you've consumed massive amounts of alcohol, then you probably didn't move all night and you're probably going to experience something called paralysis, um, which is involved with uh, too, consumption of too much alcohol. You, you don't have these normal kind of body movements, but you probably move about 10 to 12 times at night rotating in and out and it just simply per probably saves a lot of your muscles. If you lie there like that all night, um, th those muscles can get damaged and so you rotate like that, which is kind of cool and you do it right here at, at REM sleep. You move before and then right after the stage is done. So you all know what REM sleep is, right? Active eyes, active brain, heart rate, respiration, and increased genital activity, all physiological, uh, easily tracked, watched for, you know, by sleep researchers to, to know that you're in rapid eye movement. It's a pretty telling stage because this occurs every night for almost every one of you and the mystery gets deepened because we're not sure why people spend so much time in REM and a weird piece of this is are your muscles are in effect inactive. They, you can, you're literally unable to move your muscles. That includes your mouth and so for many of you, your feet, your legs, your arms, some of you will dream about things. Very common dream is what? Falling or not being able to move. How many of you have been ever chased in a nightmare by something and you can't move? Or somebody's in your room and you can't scream? 
How many feel like those are horrible <laughs> memories to bring up right now? <laughs> and you're sitting there going, and you just can't get it out. Well, part of it is your muscles, your motor neurons, uh, during, by the way, most of the time when you have a vivid dream and it's clear that someone's getting you and you're trying to run and you just can't, and you can't say, get away and scream and all of that, it's because of this. Your brain is, want, is thinking it's in this dream, which doesn't really realize it's in a dream, it thinks it's real, and you're trying to scream out. A lot of people have reported that it feels like they're just paralyzed. Some have even said, how many of you all have done this where, oh, by the way, this happens a lot when, you, when you're waking up, because REM sleep does what throughout the night? It gets longer and longer, so it's 1.30, perfect night. You've just rode, ro rolled over. You're now finishing up a period of about five to 10 minutes of REM sleep, and you're about to ready to make another probably body movement, but that 10 minutes turns into like 30 minutes at the end of the night. Does that make sense? It goes like this. Stage one, two, three, four, you go back up, four, three, two, REM, and you spend about 10 minutes there. Then you repeat that. You go two, three, four, four, three, two, REM, and that REM stage is now longer. It's now three o'clock in the morning, and it's about 20 minutes. And then by about 4.30, it's about 30 minutes long. And by the time you wake up, you're probably in REM sleep, and you have inactive muscles. And some of you wake up going, if you feel like you're paralyzed, or somebody is sitting on you, or odd bad things that you think about. Oftentimes because your brain's trying to figure out, why can't I move right now? Somebody is getting me and I'm stuck somehow. And so we come up with, and our dreams are part of, probably related in some respects to this. Are there any questions about rapid eye movement? It's a weird stage. You spend a good one third of your life, uh, one third of your sleeping life in REM sleep itself. By the way, if you're like 20 years old, uh, or 18, 19, whatever, 20, you've already spent like almost seven years of sleep. Seven years of your 18 or 19 years have been asleep. That's a weird, isn't that weird to you? It's a long time. So it looks like REM sleep, by the way, looks like uh, if when we look at EEGs, it frankly looks a lot like awake. Maybe like stage one sleep. It's just uh, a very common, so here's the cycles that I told you about. It's midnight. And you could see, look at on the very bottom row, you could see at 1.30, between the one and the two, you're in REM sleep, that red spot right there, and it's only about 10 minutes long. And then you go, th you go down the stages, you go from REM down to stage two, three, four. It's now two in the morning, 2.30 in the morning, and you're back in stage four. What do you notice, though, about stage, see, the, see that very bottom blue right here is stage four. So right, in this area, down in here, is stage four. What do you notice about stage four sleep as the night goes on? As the night goes on, what happens to your stage, your like, what happens to stage four? You never make it there. So here it is, ready? It's, it's, here's 1.30, you're in REM sleep. That's one ultradian cycle, 90 minutes. You do it again, 90 minutes, longer REM. But here's the next 90 minutes, you don't dive into stage four anymore. You only go stage two, maybe part of three, and then you go to REM, and then now you're going stage two, REM, stage two, REM, stage two, and a lot of time in REM. And this is the first, on a perfect night's sleep, you're only going to stage four about twice. And you're spending more time in REM sleep. Does that make sense? The mystery is, what's going on in REM sleep? Why do we do this? Why is that ex extended period of time and, and what's happening? So the importance of REM is uncertain and people are doing lots of research to figure it out. Uh, we do know that if we take individuals, we could deprive you of certain stages of sleep. So if you ever wanna be part of a cool little study, we can actually, uh, not here, but in, in, in some sleep clinics and other places where they have elaborate laboratories like this, they could actually um, deprive you, for example, of stage four sleep. They'll hook you up, watch you as soon as you get to stage four and show the delta waves, for example, they'll wake you up. And they say, wait, wake up, wake up. 
you can't go into stage four. And then they'll let you finally get back to sleep. And, then, and as soon as you get to two or three, you're fine. But if you start heading down, they wake you up and they deprive you of stage four sleep. Which subjects have a harder, more difficult existence the next day. For example, their reaction times are off. If we deprive you of stage four sleep, or if we deprive you of REM sleep, take a guess as to which group struggles more the next day with things like speed of reacting to something that might pop up and you have to react quickly. The answer is REM sleep people this is a normal sleep, person who got a normal night's sleep, this is how quickly they react in milliseconds, for example, on something like reaction time. But when we deprive people of REM sleep, here's what happens to their performance. It drops way off. If we de deprive people of stage three and four, they look pretty normal. Something's going on when, we, when a person gets to REM sleep and we say, wait, 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 wake up, wake up. And you wake up and you don't get to REM sleep, this is what happens. Your brain doesn't like it and it shows up. And so if you do this for a long period of time, it could be very damaging to the brain. In fact, if we keep people, anybody know what could happen if we kept doing this to people, REM sleep? They could die, yeah. No, they can't, they don't die. <laughs> that would be just, that would be cruel and unethical. Um, now, what happens is they don't die, but what they do do is they show these performances, and guess what happens on the third night or the fourth night when we stop the experiment? What do you think they do? They go to sleep at midnight, and they don't go to stage one, two, three, four, three, two, REM. What do they do? They fall asleep, and they go right into REM. Call it REM rebound. They jump right into REM, and they spend most of the time there. It's as if the brain goes, all right, stop messing around. I'm gonna go get REM sleep right now because I need it bad, I'm gonna spend. And that's, by the way, it's not a very restful sleep either because the brain is really active and weird. And so how important is REM? It, it shows it is the stage of sleep that you're, you need most. Um, by it, another way of knowing that is every other stage of sleep, stages one, two, three, and four, we actually call those non-REM stages. And that tells you something, right? If something's pretty important and if you call it REM and everything else is non-REM, that tells you how important that is. Does that make sense? It'd be like saying, you know, Biola University students are, it, it's so important that you're either a Biola College University student or you're a non-Biola student. <laughs> There's only two people in the world. <laughs> Biola students or non-Biola students? <laughs> and that would be exactly what we ha what's happening here. We realize, okay, there's something going on with REM. So the purpose then becomes the big question. Why? Why would we spend so much time in a stage that's marked by these things that, that, uh, that is also associated, by the way, with very vivid dreaming? Um, What's happening there? What's going on? Uh, even in, people say, well, maybe it's because we're processing things a lot, and that's why dreams are occurring, and we, you start now getting into why we dream, but uh, one piece of evidence that this is important and probably not necessarily because of dreaming is the fact that babies, when you can watch their REM cycle, or their sleep cycles while still in the womb, we, you know, we have the ability to, to listen to a, a, a baby in the womb still, and they show REM sleep, in the, in, in, and they show the patterns, the stages of sleep. And the question is, why does a baby need to be in REM? It's certainly not for dreaming. Babies wouldn't have very vivid dreams during that time, though they might. Uh, we, it's just unclear what's happening during REM sleep for them. But, so th these are just important questions that are going on in the field. And uh, are there any, do you have any questions about stages or uh, types of sleep or? Yeah, uh -huh. it's a great question. She said, well, on this graph, the three, four sleep deprived people, uh, how did they eventually even get to REM sleep if you'd stopped them from going three, four? And, and it's a great question because the answer is, ready? This is just a, um, 
your brain, that what they would do is they'd go stage one, two, and then as soon as they get through, they'd wake them up. And the person would go back in, one, two, try and get down to three, four, wake up, and then they would just go to REM. So that, in other words, you don't have to, in fact, tonight, odds are many of you are gonna go right to sleep and you're not going to follow this one, two, three, four, four, three, two, REM. You're just gonna do weird things. And uh, <laughs> you're gonna go into REM, you're gonna go into two, three, you might jump right into four. Uh, just, uh, so it's, it's just a perfect night. So that's what's happening. They just go into REM whenever they want. Huh. Yes. Um, whenever you're like uh, put to sleep at a doctor's office, like with uh, prosthetics or something, yes. is that considered sleeping or no? Um, when, you, when, you, when, when a doctor gives you an anesthesia, for example, to kill pain, or, or they give you a deep level, for example, of um, some drug that will put, put you under or knock you out. It is a, it, it's not like you're going into a sleep stage. Uh, it's, it, I guess it would be, there, there's, there's different uh, levels of awareness and what they're doing is they're just knocking you down to aware where you're just not aware. You're, you're, that's being shut off. It's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a unique form, we call it, you know, of awareness. One of those the ones I talked about earlier that sometimes result from head injury or too much trauma, um, but we wouldn't call it a stage of sleep per se. Yeah, it's a good question. All right, so if any of you all have ever wanted to take this opportunity to, uh, there, there was a cool study. How many have ever uh, stayed awake? Well, I'm sure most of you pulled an all-nighter before. Um, how many have ever, have anybody done it longer than one night? Two nights maybe? Two without sleep. Anybody do it longer? Three nights? Military? How many? Three days, that's, uh-huh. 72 hours. Yeah, what the effects are, um, anybody, you know, what's gonna happen, by the way, I, I don't know if it happens for many of you if you felt it overnight, but the next day, what will life be like? It'll be hard. Here's what will happen in this little experiment. Uh, they, they made people take three days, uh, no, actually it was just two days, I think, of sleep deprivation, 48 hours, and they filmed them and uh, so we'll watch a little bit of their experience real quick. About eight hours a night, I'd say, ideally. <laughs> there you go, Ollie. Thank you very much indeed. I actually get a lot of sleep uh, every evening. I try to get as much as possible, uh, at least eight hours. If I can get a few more in, then uh, I will try. Pick your size, so I mean. any size. I'm usually out late on a weekend, but I usually will sleep, and I will stay around the house and just kind of nod off in the afternoons. <laughs> <laughs> and they're off with just 59 hours, 59 minutes and 55 seconds to go. For the next three days, we'll continually monitor our volunteers' performance, as well as physical tests, we'll be giving our guinea pigs a series of intentionally boring tasks that will measure their judgment and ability to concentrate. As Ollie responds to this flashing light, his brain's activity is measured. The smooth lines on his EEG mean he's awake and alert. And a driving test will record the volunteer's ability to stay on the road. 60 hours is a long time, but all stimulants like tea and coffee, even chocolate, are banned from the human zoo. As the first day turns to the first night, the volunteers settle down in front of the TV. To help make sure they don't drop off, there's a security guard and a team of student minders. It's getting to about half a so we get a bit tired now to tell the truth, and we're trying to do things to keep ourselves going. As day breaks, our human guinea pigs are feeling the effects of a sleepless night. Well, the body needs to recover from the day's work, and what happens is that part, during part of sleep, you get into very deep sleep. Uh, and this is what we think is, is the recuperative phase of sleep, so to make the body feel good the next day. Right, well folks, you're halfway through. How's it feel? This morning I felt really elated, and in my lungs, my chest, I felt this kind of very, um, it was quite a nervous feeling, but I don't feel nervous, so, but it was like I had the symptoms of feeling quite kind of anxious. Last night was really, really heavy, but I think we've learned lessons from last night. You need to be moving and jumping around. Yeah, really, just, just jumping, jumping around, around a bit. Yeah. Sitting's not good, definitely. No. Exercise helps them stay awake and warm. Later, Vic writes her website diary. It's um, 
particularly late on Saturday night. In fact, it's, oh no, it's not, it's sunny 5 to 11, which isn't late at all. It feels late. It feels terribly late. And I know that this is going to seem like a really long night, uh, like last night did, and I'm not really looking forward to it that much, to tell you the truth. Hopefully we'll uh, see each other through uh, the next few hours to uh, Sunday morning. It's 25 past four in the morning, We've done some 43, nearly at half hours. Um, I'm knackered. I'm, I'm really knackered. <laughs> I'm knackered. Dawn breaks. They've now been awake for two days and two nights. Uh, last night was absolute hell. <laughs> uh, to be quite blunt about it, it was very, very difficult. Um, the last four hours, I would say, especially, um, where we all got to the state where unless we actually stood up and walked around we were going to fall asleep weren't we just six hours left staying awake is proving extremely difficult in the last round of tests the volunteers are nodding off you can see it in their brain activity this is what we call a micro sleep he's not only not processing the information if something was to pop up in front of him he wouldn't see it he's not going to respond. And that's also reflected in the eye channels here. We've got slow rolling eye movements lasting several seconds. And that typical pattern you see as somebody begins to sort of nod off. Seem to have uh, been traveling a bit off road here. Yeah, I think uh, whether I, I actually uh, dozed off for, uh, longer in this period, uh, right. because actually in that period I've gone so far off the road that I didn't quite know which direction to turn back right. in in order to find the road again, so right, and okay. hence I crashed. <laughs> the 60 hours is nearly up, and even the thought of sleeping in the zoo is enticing. Cruel as it sounds, before we let our volunteers escape, we want to measure their recovery. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So, you can see what ends up happening here after they get some sleep. Good morning. I think... Oh, that was a good sleep, that was. After 12 hours sleep, the volunteers are assessed for their recovery. All three are revitalised, and Ollie and Vic are virtually back to normal. We've got some of their results here. And what we're doing was recording... So what happened is they went back. They did, they did very well after 12 hours sleep. It was a long sleep, but they spent a lot of time in REM sleep at that point, making up things, at, which we do kind of as we go along later on in life. Any questions about that experiment? It was cool to see. It's hard to do. Yeah, we don't recommend it because you really do. It really, people go into micro sleeps. That's the problem. They were literally sitting there and just, they would just go to sleep. Call them micro bursts and they, their eyes would roll. They'd be asleep. And then, then pretty soon they'd be good, happen to be woken up. That's why they were monitored to keep them awake. The brain desires this so much. Um, so sleep deprivation, some again, uh, it, it's one of those. Um, uh, it just simply re-illustrates re how important this is. Biola University offers a variety of biblically centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Visit biola.edu to find out how Biola could make a difference in your life.